this is Pastor Ryan Chang. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I'd like to speak about racism under the rubric of now it is sort of evil, but is it the worst evil that has ever happened to humanity? And for that, I'm going to bring in Ibram Kendi, the leading anti-racist. That's what Kendi said. Racism is not even 600 years old. Race and racism were constructed in the 15th century by a guy named Gomez de Zurara, who was a royal chronicler who was justifying what his boss, Prince Henry of Portugal, was doing. When you saw a bunch of people brought from Africa, he noticed that some even had fair white skin, but despite that, Candy said, despite their different skin color, white enough, and ethnic group, Zurara blended them into one single group of people worthy enough of enslavement. And Candy see that as the beginning of racism when you single out a group of people and call them a race and put them at the low hierarchy, that is the beginning of racism only about 600 years old. Well, I want you to know something, that racism is evil, but it's not the most evil alone. It has company, tribe on tribe, which has no dimension of racism. Like what happened in 1994, when 800,000 Tutsis were killed by Hutus. There was a reason why Time Magazine at that time had a cover story there are no devils left in hell, the missionary said. They are all in Rwanda. This is called ethnic cleansing or tribal cleansing. No racism involved. That is evil. Many examples, unfortunately. Genocide by Pakistan Army in 1971. Pakistani Muslims killed nearly 3 million Bengali Muslims, according to a study done by University of Alabama. No racism was involved. The Turks killed up to 1.2 million Armenians, 1915 to 1916. No racism involved. It was tribe on tribe. It was ethnic cleansing. Yes, that is evil. Racism is evil, but it's company. What does that mean? It means tribalism, ethnocentrism, and anti-Semitism have been around a lot longer and are more universal than racism. A lot longer. They've been around a lot longer than racism. And it's more widespread, it's universal than racism. Racism is not universal as ethnocentrism or tribalism because it puts up mostly in Europe and the New World. So when you see the hierarchy, you don't put racism on top as if it's the worst evil. It is worst evil along with ethnocentrism, which results in ethnic cleansing and also tribalism that resulted in killing up millions of people throughout history, throughout the world. And so centrism, racism, anti-Semitism are all the bad fruits of a bad heart. We have a terrible social system, we have a terrible political system. They're all a factor, but it comes from the bad heart. We don't put ranking here. Racism is bad, it's evil. Ethnocentrism that resulted in ethnic cleansing is bad. Anti-Semitism, where it resulted in the expulsion and massacre of Jews, they're all bad from a bad heart. Social scientists, secular people, progressive will never say this. I say this because I am a believer of God's word. Jeremiah 17:9, the heart is deceitful above all things, beyond cure. Racism, ethnocentrism, and anti-Semitism are the bad fruits of a corrupt, selfish heart because of sin. White, black, brown, Asian people share the same heart. Then what is God's answer to human problem, human imperfection? Jesus says it like this, 
you must be born again. This is talking about regeneration. That is according to Titus 3 and 5, the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. Upon being regenerated by the Holy Spirit, new seed has been embedded into our heart. Holy Spirit, it is God, according to Philippians 2.13, quote, who will work in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. End of a quote. Here's an example of that change. My old friend in Mexico, Javier Colmenares. He was locked up in this prison called Zeres for 12 years for drug trafficking. They did everything for these guys to reform and change, but prison system couldn't do that. But God did. For several years as a church, we went there every week. We preached the gospel, and when they became saved, we discipled them, we taught Bible study, we began a church, and Javier became one of those people who was transformed. He became such a transformed individual that the largest Baptist church in Chihuahua, Mexico, and trusted him with all these keys as the custodian of the church. Upon taking this picture in 2011, I promised Javier that I will share his story wherever I go. What's his story? Only God can change us through the power of the Holy Spirit and through the gospel of Jesus Christ. The government cannot fix the heart. That's something only God can, followed by rigorous discipleship. I pray that churches in general, and black churches in particular, recommit to preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit.